I mean, in law school, you learn every contract has consideration, right. which means that right. I give something, you give something. But no, this is a one-way contract that is, um, what happens if you don't sign it? Right. Well, you know? in, I mean, in this case, the child was punished. If I don't sign it, the child has attention to finish their homework at the end of the week. But this teacher said, I will talk to your child and I will tell her there is absolutely no penalty at all for not turning the homework in. Nothing harmful will happen to her. She won't lose anything because we've agreed to this. Well, you got a great teacher. You really I, did. You're lucky. I think you're right. And yeah. other parents have come up to me. I haven't proselytize this. I haven't gone up on the rooftop. Well, of course, this is going to go up on YouTube, so it's, you know, I'm, I'm going to be rooftop shouting. But uh, in the class, I have not done it. But someone has asked me what has happened because they know how I felt uh, about homework. I will share, and it may be right for their child, that it may not be right for their child. It's that parent to make the decision because the, the school has them for six hours then it's the parent time. I don't feel it's the parent's obligation to teach something to the child, a lesson that's not been taught in school. In school. I mean, parents right. have so many other things that they want right. to teach. Maybe you want your daughter to learn how to do radio with you, which would be so much more interesting and valuable. Um, one of the things you and I talked about years ago that has still always been on my mind is the whole idea of parents opting out, right. which is basically what you're doing. You have gotten permission to opt out. I have always advised people to ask for the same thing. I think you may have been the first person who ever told me that you had tried to do that. And I know that there's um, actually a school in Australia that has an opt-out provision in their policy. It's one of the few places I've seen it. But every time, like you said, in your community, there's some parents who want it. Well, great. If they want it, go ahead and do it. But you have to recognize that there are parents who don't want it, and they need to be allowed to make their own you know, decisions for their own child and their own household. Well, you have to be allowed to parent the way you want to parent. Exactly. Some some people want their to children... To a degree. Well, to a good degree. Well, you know, obviously you're not allowed to starve your child or beat your child or any of those things. And with, you know, for good reason. Well, but but, well, philosophically, some parents want their child to grow up to be a follower and fit in. And other parents want the child to be an independent thinker and develop their own course. And that's a parenting style. Sure. I mean, I don't think the people who are telling their kids to follow the rules would necessarily agree with you that they're bringing their kids up to be followers. But I do think that there's a certain amount of independent thinking that goes into challenging the status quo, asking people to take a look at the research and see if the research isn't valuable or it doesn't support what we're doing, then it's time to rethink it. And um, I'm not really, sh I mean, and, well, I, I've seen parents, I've been in places and the, the kid is complaining and the parent tells the kid, look, when you grow up, you're going to be working for somebody and you're going to hear something that you don't want to okay. do and you're going to have to do it. So learn to do it now. That's training your kid to be a follower. Yeah, sure. Well, in a way, that's what public schools were set up to do. From the very beginning, public schools... Oh, but everyone says, give me that independent thinker. We want that independent thinker. Unfortunately, we're not developing very many independent thinkers anymore. That's one of the biggest problems with the education system. As Sir Ken Robinson told me, no. you got to <laughs> teach that child to be out there and to be creative. You, I, you, I totally agree with him. You don't be creative by putting him into a little box... And, yeah. You and, lose so much by putting all these kids into little boxes. That's why I care so much about what's happening to your third grader, where the teacher says 45 minutes a night plus reading 30 minutes, 75 minutes a night. Right. That wasn't going to happen in my house. <laughs> There's no time left. When's the time for her to go out and play or whatever she wants to do? Right. No, it, 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 it's, it's definitely a problem, and some Kids may need extra help from their parents, but call it that. Send home a tutoring packet and let the parent know that you have to do something. And if you're not able to or not willing to do it yourself, 
go back to the teacher and say, look, we have this issue here. The child needs to learn to read. I don't know how to help them do this. I don't know how to do teach them the math. What can we do together? Not only that, I think what's missing is, is usually if a child is having trouble in school, the way the school is teaching it is not reaching that child. So, so to send home more of the same for that child is just an exercise in frustration. There are so many different ways of teaching math or reading or any of the basics, right? The school tends to teach it only in one particular way. So what about if the kid comes home and you want to do something different with them? And especially if you're a, you know, an educated parent yourself, you probably have different ways of teaching them that are probably going to be more effective. So to then do more of the teacher's work at home is really a waste of time. Right. You have to take a different approach. Right. Exactly. Any bright spots around the country on, on homework? Is, is the tide going to turn? Oh, I, I don't know. I mean, obviously, I follow what happens in different communities. I do know that the parents in Palm, I can't remember if it's Palm Springs or Palm Beach, Florida, are up in arms because they've just... Um, Palm Springs is in, in California. So, 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 I guess I guess it's Palm Beach, Florida, then, where they've really organized themselves because the school board implemented new homework policy this year, where I forget exactly what it is, but it's up to about an hour a night for the third graders. Wow. So they really oh. added a lot, and the parents have really gotten upset about that. It's still very slow, Stan. It feels to me like it's one person at a time, one community at a time, one teacher at a time. You know, when is um, the whole tide going to turn, I, I couldn't even begin to predict anymore. It's also hard for a parent to speak out. Yeah, it is. I don't know why, but I guess maybe they've been brought up in the public school system where they were told to follow, to follow the rules too much. Maybe you know? they think that they're gonna, the school is going to take it out on their kid if they open their mouths. Well, it could be that, too. I think there's a lot of reasons. I think, in general, most people are not that confident to speak up, and they think that the school may know better than they do. So they don't have quite the nerve that you or I do of going into the school and saying, hey, this is what my research shows me. What do you think about that? And then the teacher, <laughs> uh, well, we do it because, and they give you some reason, and you say, well, actually, um, can you point to some research on that because I haven't been able to find any. You know, the teacher says, oh, yeah, your third grader needs it because it will teach you responsibility. And you say, well, can you show me a study that shows that it will teach responsibility? Right. And the teacher says, I can't. And then you say, well, then you know what? I'd like to teach my child responsibility myself by having them make their bed every morning or, you know, go grocery shopping with me or whatever it is that I want them to do rather than to do your work. I mean, that's that's the thing. What are we saying? We have to prepare children for an unhappy adulthood? Right. No, children are children. <laughs> I mean, the thing is, Stan, nobody ever talks about this, but you don't say, well, my kid is going to learn how to drive when they're 16, so when they're 7, I'm going to put them behind the wheel to get them prepared for when they're driving, right? Right. Make There's them have stuff. an accident. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah, then what it's going to be like. I mean, yeah. but in terms of Certain life skills, we think we need to get them started early. Well, they're going to have a, a boring job, so they may as well do it now. A boss is going to tell them one day. And you know what? Most people don't have bosses the way school, you know, the way school acts, which is, you know, at the end of the day, you have to have this done by tomorrow. I don't care what else is going on in your life. I mean, the most boring kinds of jobs are still those jobs that people do by punching a time clock and they leave them at the end of the day. Right. Otherwise, if you have a little flexibility in your job, your job is not as boring and usually you're not as, uh, you know, you're not under the daily, hourly responsibility. You may have to get the report due in three weeks or you're on some kind of deadline, but you're, you're figuring out how to handle that. A parent who told me that they advised their child to get used to this because that's what it means. I said, you should, you have to teach your child. And he says, what do I have to teach him? I said, you have to teach him how to open up the newspaper, get a wanted and get a different job. Right. Good. I, that's, that's a very good response. I agree with you. Well, thank you very much for all the work, Sarah Bennett. You're a hero to me for oh. leading the charge on 
uh, ending homework and enlightening a lot of parents and hopefully making a lot of kids' lives a lot happier. Well, thanks so much, Dan. Okay. Okay, bye-bye.